Today is another fantastic day on the Gen Z Sanctum. I am your host today, Nathan, with my co-host, Nick. Yo. That's all? Yep, that's <laughs> just yo. That's all I got. So, uh, as of course with all these episodes, we introduce small talk, but then again, it is Christmas themed. Once again, it is the last Wednesday before Christmas. Exactly. Hey. Christmas is on so, Monday this year. It is, which is a really weird day to have Christmas. Exactly. Just, yeah, Monday. It's on a Monday. All right, so, Snow, where are you? What's been going on with you lately? Uh, stuff and uh things. Okay, I'll be more specific. I'll be more specific. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just some stuff and things. Anyway, no. Uh, so Job Coach uh, is pushing our meeting until after the new year. So next time I see her will be the 16th of January. Interesting, considering that she hasn't really done a whole lot and hasn't found me a, uh, you know, job, which would be no. nice. You know what I find interesting? Why you're using a job coach is if the job coach isn't really very helpful. Because they're supposed to be helpful. But this job well, coach not. is not. So exactly. I, I would be like, uh, well, guess what? I don't need you because you are just wasting my time. Yeah, so. I uh, have been thinking about that. last. The last person, because this is the second one. So the last oh, I one. You were still on the original one. No, no, no. The la the original one also sucked, and so we gave up on them after they did nothing. And so this one, uh, my mother was like, "Listen, give them more time, a little more, or more time, because this one's got more, a little more experience." Um, so let's, let's give her, give her a couple of months and see what we can pull up. So here we are, f uh, four months later and yeah, I was nothing. Say a couple months. Uh, that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. So here we are four months later and I'm and still unemployed. Still no job. So, um, let me just say this, uh, uh, no, I'm kidding. I know. Ah. Anyway, uh, editor, bleep, uh, I, I didn't actually say the word, so you don't have to bleep anything. Just bleep, uh, bleep. Future me, bleep it out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, bleep, uh, editor, uh, bleep everything that Nathan says out. How are you gonna bleep that out? Uh, like this. Beep! <laughs> Anyway, uh, so. Anyway, so. That's all I got for small talk. really slow. Oh, oh dang. Like, when I say really slow, I mean really slow. So... Dang, so you I walk into work first... and... You walk into work and say, hey, what's up? And they're like... Oh, uh, no, not that kind of stuff. Okay. okay. So, anyway, half the day at work, I had just about nothing to do. Like, Dang. I'm not even joking. So, yeah. That sucks. It's kind of slow during this time of year. Like, it can be on the regular, sometimes not. Dang. But... Anyway, so I stood around like half the day with legit nothing to do. So it's been a bit of a boring day. So they they pay you to just sit there? I'm salaried, yeah. Dang, okay. Uh so the thing is, even if they you know how some jobs will send you home to save like money mm -hmm. on employment. Even if they send me home, I'm still getting paid for the full day, so it's not like I'm losing money if they send me home halfway through the day. So that's why they usually keep people there anyway. Dang. So if they send, so if you come into work and you get sick and you vomit everywhere and they're like, listen, go home, you're getting paid for the hours you're not there. Yep. That's how salary pay works. Dang. Alrighty then. That sounds like cheating. I'm kidding. But that's the guy who doesn't have a job at all. So I'll just shut up. Here's the here's the downside of salary pay. So, if we were open to like six, right? Mm -hmm. I'd be working an hour for free. Dang, that sucks. So, that is the downside. So we get paid for eight hours a day. 
Right. So if I were to work more than eight hours a day, well, that that's tough luck. I'm still getting paid for only eight hours. So le- so set a timer on your phone for eight hours, and as soon as your paid time gets is up, just leave. Well, I will say I'm there for nine hours, but an hour of that is lunch. So well, that yeah, that makes sense. But like, if they're like, "Hey, listen, we're open for an extra hour. Can you stay?" I'd be like, "Uh, let me just check my wallet." Oh, you only get off at eight. Uh, you ha- that one hour would not be paid for. It's free. Uh, I guess I'm leaving. I'll see you later. Well, yes, that's how wallets. That talk. is unfortunately not how salary pay works. Dang. So. Yeah, I would have left. I would have been like, "Listen, I'm only paid to be here eight hours. My shift is eight hours. So, no, I'm not staying an extra hour. See you later." Well, we wish we could do that sometimes, but, uh, no. Dang. Maybe you should, uh, I don't know. Something. I don't know. (laughs) No. I ain't gonna do nothing. Dang. Anyway, so, um, yes. Yes. (laughs) So, So, uh. The topic today. Yes, is. A Christmas-related topic. Is. Oh, we are going to talk about the traditions of Christmas. And the tr- not the traditions, like personal traditions, the Santa Claus. And Fake. And where did he resort from? <laughs> Alright, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, it, seriously. Just pure silence. Fake. Like- <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're talking about... Um, not the traditions of Christmas, but the origins of Christmas. The, the origins of traditions. Right. So I don't think Santa's a tradition, be about but okay. The origin of Krampus, because Krampus. I don't like talking about him, because he talking about him is almost like worshipping the devil. And Dang. I don't entirely agree with that. Neither like, do it I. It literally is. Krampus, it Krampus, Krampus, is. Krampus, 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 <laughs> Krampus. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, okay. I need a stick. I need a stick. Well, take Bad. the wow. Take the stick and shove it up your. Uh, wait. Uh, hold okay. on a second. Uh, 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 this, this, this is a family-friendly podcast. Shut is the it? frick up. Krampus, 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 Krampus. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, uh, no. So yeah, we'll be talking about the the origins of different Christmas traditions and other. So such there, things, there yeah. are so many different origins of Santa Claus, like the origin of. Yeah, Santa Claus changes Jolly old a lot. Sa- Santa Claus oh. changes a lot, or like around the world. When you're in different countries, like there's all different kinds of he, like his Santa dress Claus changes and stuff. Claus. Yeah, yeah. But Santa Claus is the biggest in the United States, right? And also, uh, Germany is number two. Yeah, o- old Saint but Nick. Old Saint Nicholas. So anyway. Apparently, the origin of Santa Claus actually comes from Turkey. Um, believe it or not, yeah. Interesting. I, I I I I was actually shocked when I read that. I was like, I would have never guessed that. So the origin of Santa Claus is basically so you know how Santa Claus, you know Saint Nick, Santa Claus, Kris Kringle, all different names. Apparently, the actual origin. His name was Chris Kringle. Right. So, the way it all started was is that he was basically, so charity didn't really exist. So, he was said, they don't know the exact time period, but he was to be, or they think he was born in like 926 AD or something like that. Um, so, 300 AD. Time ago. 380. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. And they say that he basically, I don't think it was on December 25th, but he just loved going around, around the time, yeah. Yeah. Around like winter time and when people were struggling, he loved going around helping them out with food, helping them out with groceries, you know, clothes. You know, stuff they needed. You know. Yeah. That's kind of where the origin came from. Mm Mm-hmm. And then that kind of philosophy kept going, hey, let's make him into a 
fancy magical man who's got a big belly, he's got a big white beard, he wears a big red suit and flies around the world in a sleigh of reindeer and the, you know. Well, uh, yeah. Santa it's it's evolved over the years. Santa Claus has really changed from where he first began a um a Christian bishop who lived in Turkey. Yeah. Fascinating. Oh, not that turkey. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, a uh, different turkey. <laughs> different turkey. Wow. Yo, uh, hey, Santa Claus, where are you from? Oh, I'm from... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all the Turkish listeners out there. I was not trying to be racist. Anyway. Uh-huh. Nah, who am I kidding? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. All right, so... That is one of the big origins of santa claus do you know the the specific story that made him as famous as he is the specific story no i didn't go that deep into the article okay i will tell you the story of saint nick the one that's told uh the world over and basically was the first story that basically made him become who we know and love today as santa claus uh, all right i'll make sure to get ready Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this happened in Turkey, as we know. Uh, basically, uh, the story is of Saint Nicholas. Not not a saint yet. He was just a bishop at the time. Uh, essentially, uh, what happened was he lived next door to this older man and his wife and three beautiful daughters. And those that older man was about to lose his house uh but uh if he could marry off his three daughters to three wealthy men then he could uh be saved from debt and, and also save the house uh well bishop nicholas uh found this out and uh one night late in the year around december 25th we don't know the exact date but a late night in december um he comes creeping along to his neighbor's house and he drops a bag of gold in through the window and um so the next morning they find it and the first daughter is married off to this rich uh, he need the, the they need a dowry basically the the father needs a writ like a sum of money to give um with the daughter to whoever uh you know she, he's marrying her uh, off to but he couldn't afford that so nicholas gives a, a bag of money uh, for the first daughter he comes back the following night drops a second bag for the second daughter uh once the father figures this out he closes and locks the window and puts a sock a stocking which is essentially a long sock uh over the fireplace uh the fire had died out so nicholas all he could do when he found the window to be closed was climb up onto their roof and drop the third bag of money for the third daughter down the chimney which landed in the stocking and the ma old man who stayed up late waiting to see who uh it was that was giving this money to them rushed outside and found it to be nicholas and nicholas said um you know like don't tell anyone that it was me who helped you and that is essentially the story of santa claus and that's why santa claus is a full I, I wouldn't necessarily call it like a ghost story, but it's a story of. It's not a ghost story, fantasy. but yeah, that's the legend of of Santa Claus and how he became, how he came to be. Which is quite interesting. Very but interesting. As you can see, you know, from the origin of the story, you can kind of see where all the tradition, the stocking, stocking, the fireplace, the chimney, all, yep, all all that, stuff all that stuff, from, yep. Yeah. So, Nathan, uh, do you know the origin story of the Christmas tree? I remember reading it, but it's been a few years. I'm a little rusty oh, on okay. the origin story. Well, tell me what you do remember about the origin of the Christmas tree. I, I, I don't remember if I heard a different origin story from the actual original, 
Okay, what did, what did you I hear? Belie- I believe it came from Germany, if I'm correct. Correct. It did come yes, from Germany. Did. Okay. But And it was a specific tree that they would decorate. It was an evergreen, but it was like a specific type of evergreen that they would decorate with candles, is what it was, I think. So... Something like that. Partially, partially true. Evergreen. Partially true. Um. However, uh, it was not uh, an evergreen tree. It was an oak tree. Uh, let me tell you this story. So, uh, the story of the Christmas tree, uh, actually, uh, started off as a pagan thing. So back. It, pagan meaning non-christian which sounds kind of dumb because like technically for christians like islamic would be pagan right pagan yeah. being non-christian or the original religion of a country that the christians then moved into um which we're not going to get into all of that because usually when christianity uh reaches a country especially back in you know the middle ages it didn't go so well for the natives, but we're not going to talk about that in this story. So, uh, the Christmas tree is a story from Germany where essentially uh, there was this great oak tree, giant. This, I mean, this was the biggest oak tree you've ever seen, and uh, the people live who lived near it uh, worshipped it as a god, and. Along, they would they would hang things from it. So you know, candles, as I said, other you know, fancy uh, pieces of colored cloth, other stuff like that. They would like hang it, and they would worship the tree. Then comes along a uh, a Catholic, I think, priest or bishop, who um, on Christmas Eve brought an axe and chopped the tree down by himself claiming this tree is no god you should worship the lord instead and chops the tree down and it falls to the ground and to sort of remember the tree that got cut down uh, every year they would the people of germany would bring a tree into their own house and decorate it but as always very few people remember the pagan origins of the Christmas tree because Christianity has sort of absorbed the story and turned it into a modern Christmas thing. Huh. Very well, I guess I interesting did hear origin. A different story. I know it was from Germany. That I definitely remember. Yes. The people would bring trees into their house and decorate it to remember the original tree that everybody worshipped back when that was a thing that a Catholic priest cut down. Yeah, which, you know, that's a little interesting, the fact that a tree would be something that you would worship. Oh, back in the day, people would worship all sorts of strange things. Like, it would rain, and they would worship it. Like, oh, look, the god of clouds, and, like, they used to worship the sun. (laughs) Like, yeah, uh, there were... You know what that's called? Desperation. That's called, uh, dumb. (laughs) That's called... That's just called dumb. That's called early civilizations didn't know how the world worked and just thought that if you prayed hard enough, uh, rain would fall on your crops. That's not really how that works. Um, but yeah, so those are two very interesting stories. But I kind of hijacked the episode. I'll let you go back to what you were doing. And then we do have the Santa Claus, but then we have the Christian aspect of Christmas. You know, right? Jesus of course, was born in a manger. Yep. Um, Although one we... thing that I find pretty interesting yes. is the fact that um, we celebrated on December twenty fifth, which yes. is obviously winter. Yep. But if you go in the Bible, it describes as it being summer or spring. Interesting. Well, it yeah, it doesn't describe the exact, like, it doesn't say December 25th. It, 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 it doesn't say like I said, the 25th. It doesn't yeah. describe the actual temperature of what it was. Or the date. What we can describe 
what we can see that the Bible is describing is that it's in the spring or summer, like it gets warmer weather, not freezing weather. Interesting. So I find it interesting that we celebrate it on December 25th, but it actually really happened in the spring or summer. At least that's what we understand. Interesting. Which I all recommend that you watch the nativity story. So we watch, uh, every year we watch the nativity story movie. I think it came out like 2000. Okay. Five. Let me six or something like that. Let me here. Let me read you a little something here. So, the nativity, um, the time that you know, of course, um, is mentioned. Let's see, the nativity accounts in the New Testament uh, from Matthew and Luke um, do not mention a date or time of year when Jesus was born. So we we here's here's what people assume. So, when was Jesus born? Let's see. According to the Bible, um, like it, sa it says, uh, modern day, of course, modern day people celebrate uh, December 25th. I freaking don't know why. Uh, but, let's see. If we read here, it's reading off some Bible quotes. But, based because of the, um, yeah, now in the sixth month. So the sixth month at the time was um, Augustus or August as we know it today. So yeah. not December because um, Augustus, which and that's another interesting thing because um, you do you know what the origin of the month of August is from and July? I actually don't. Roman emperors. So July is after Julius Caesar, the um, emperor of Rome, who made an entire month after him, named an entire month after himself. Hence July. August is Augustus Caesar, another Roman Caesar who named an entire month after himself. So at yeah. the time of Jesus' birth, uh, there uh august augustus the month of augustus was a thing because he had just this roman caesar at the time of jesus birth i believe was caesar Augustus. yes it was it was caesar augustus so he had already he had just done that he had just been like oh uh an entire month on me uh yeah we're in we're on like the second week of me right now which <laughs> so vain that uh, that uh, a ruler would name a month after himself. Oh, uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, the 5th of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, when do you get off work? Oh, about the 22nd of me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Yeah, uh, it describes Jesus' birth as taking place around August or September, not December. Fascinating. So that would be more of a... Summer slash fall. Summer, fall, yeah. So, uh, you continue. You had, I'm assuming you have notes or whatever. What do you, uh, are you going to talk about the origins of the wise men? The origins of the wise men, uh, from what I understand, I don't have notes on them, but from what I understand, so... The nativity scene, you know, it's a big part of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Nativity movies. Mm -hmm. They describe... So, they say there was three wise men. Mm -hmm. As far as we understand, we don't know if that's actually true. Because the Bible never says three wise men. They just say three gifts. Correct. So, we don't... We're, we're just assuming because there were three gifts brought by the wise men, we're assuming that meant there was three that came. Correct. It just says a group of wise men. It doesn't say three. Yeah. A group could be three, three four, five. It could wrong. be more. Exactly. So people yeah. assume that that's true. Um, also, this is very interesting, but speaking of the nativity, did you know that uh, the depiction of the nativity is 
kind of wrong, almost. Wrong as in how I can understand the wise men being wrong, but what else would have been wrong? Two other things. One, the wise men did not come at Jesus' birth. They that came is true. I do three years that. later. He was yeah. a toddler by the time they came. Uh, they saw the star on his birth, but they took a long time to travel from wherever they were from. By the time they reached Jesus, um, it had been th about approximately three more years. Um, second thing, not a stable. It was not a stable where Jesus was born. It was a place where animals were kept, which back in the day could have been a stable, but it also could have been a small cavern in the side of a hill, which would have been a lot cheaper, especially for them to just hollow out the side of a hill to keep their animals in than to build an entire structure just for the animals so it's yeah. it's assumed that it was a stable but that's a, the word stable is never mentioned again in the bible it's just but the manger manger is accurate manger, manger is, is accurate, accurate yes that's because manger is a thing that was used to feed animals for long before jesus was born that's a given but where the manger yeah. was placed either a stable or a small cave that's not said yeah so which i find interesting like christmas has a lot of traditions but they've come from a long way and yes. here's one thing that really bugs me mm -hmm. is the fact that christmas is being almost cut away from its original tradition of like the origin of why we celebrate christmas yeah, it's all. It's people think it's all about Santa Claus and all that. No, it's not. It's just more of a. Santa Claus is more of a. I think buffer for the kids for the right. Yeah. You know, having more hope, but the fact of people trying to discern people from the actual Christmas, they replace, you know, Chris, Christ with X. Xmas, yeah. That that makes I, me I, mad. That 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 makes me uh, that makes me really mad. Yeah, which is unfortunately that's what's yeah, happening that's in modern society. For you. That's just that's you would be amazed by what happens if you create something and then enough time is left to just happen. How things change over long periods of time. It's it's just awful in some cases. Yeah, it's really ridiculous if you ask me. Oh yeah. So, um what other sorts of things do you have about Christmas traditions and So legends those are the origins that I am aware of. Okay. At least. Do you want to hear about uh how Santa is celebrated in other parts of the world? Krampus knocked it. No, I'm just kidding. So, again, Krampusnacht is German. It's fascinating that Germany came up with a lot of things. <laughs> well, keep in mind Christmas that tree. most immigrants in the U.S., at least from what I've seen, maybe it's just everybody I know, but a lot of them are German. A lot of the people we know are German, but go to certain parts of the country, and it, that changes pretty quickly. Fair, fair, but... I am mostly German, so I am yes. speaking from my perspective. Yes. I was adopted, so I have no idea what I am, which is kind of interesting. But here's something else that's very interesting. Uh, in Germany, uh, presents are not left under uh, the tree, not always. Um, people... What do, you, what do you mean by not always? So there's well, a, why would some be and some not? It depends on what your traditions are. So there's a tradition in Germany, and I think Holland as well does this. Holland being a specific a section of the Netherlands, uh, leaves their shoes out on their front 
uh, step or their porch, leaves their shoes outside. And when they wake up in the morning, this is the story anyway, I don't know how it really happens, but the story is when they wake up in the morning and they open their door, their shoes have been stuffed with uh, presents. Huh. So, fasc very fascinating. I, that's kind of cool. Very interesting. Especially so in, then why yeah. would some guests be left under the tree? It all changes. Like, Christmas changes. Oh, be real time. Be real time. <laughs> be real. Hold on. Be real time. Be real time. I don't know why I'm making those noises. Honestly, probably because I'm just dumb. I posted. First one to post. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. As you start dying. So, we are hitting 30 minutes, but I want to tell you about one more Christmas thing. Tradition thing. Okay. Uh, even though this is your episode, I kind of hijacked well, it again. I'm I sorry. I mean, I, I don't really care. I'm finding these interesting. Okay, so one more. Have you heard of the uh, the Christmas uh, ceasefire? No. Okay, so let me break it down to you. Let, let's, let's go back in time. Let's hop in our TARDIS and go back in time to the First World War. Not the, the, the second, the first, which... Uh, 1913 to 1915 or 16. Um, anyway, during the, the early time, uh, it was around Christmas time, and um, we were on the Western Front of the war, which, of course, World War One. You think of trenches. You think of the 1911 gun, which was invented famously for the First World War. Uh, you think of a lot of those different types of things. Uh, you think of um, Amnesia the Bunker, which is set in the First World War. Um, so, uh, this was, of course, a fight between uh, the Americans, the British, the French, against, uh, of course, the Germans, which also happens to be the people we fought against in the Second World War. But this is the first so, um, uh, b around Christmas time, uh, we th heavy battles are happening. Things are exploding, uh, people are dying, and there's a whole big battle going on. But then, all of a sudden, in the middle of a battle, everything stops because it's Christmas, and nearby church bells start ringing. To celebrate Christmas, the I know what you're talking about. The battle stops. Yeah, yes. the battle stops, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Germans and the Allied forces start playing like soccer and opening presents together. It's one of the only times in history that Christmas stopped a war and the two sides shook hands and and celebrated Christmas together. Yeah, then I I've seen jokes made about that, like. That Christmas cease fire, and then after that, people are like, I, I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time, yeah, all right, I'm gonna kill you now, anyway. <laughs> but no, yeah, no, essentially, it was. Um, let me look actually look up the date. Uh, Christmas armistice is what it's called. Christmas, Chris, Chris, frick, I can't spell Christmas. <laughs> You're like Christmas, 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 Christmas. 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 Uh, cr the Christmas Armistice, uh, Christmas 1914. So 1914, December 24th, 1914. The cease, a five-month cease of hostilities to celebrate Christmas. Five months, fascinating. So what? Like Christmas, they um. They were like they waited until like what like April of the next year and was like all right time to start killing people again. Yes, time to absolutely murder people now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're at th nearly thirty-five minutes now, so that's that's all I've got. Cool. 
All right, well, uh, Nathaniel had a lot more of the uh, interesting stuff yes. in this episode. So, anyway, I want to wish everybody a very, very a Merry Christmas. And yes. And we will see you next week. Uh, exactly. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.